This is a podcast about one woman's mission to help entrepreneurs and business owners write better business books. Each week, we tackle your writing excuses, because there are excuses too, and help you beat the blank page of doom so that you can write the book that will grow your life and your business. Now, here's your host, Vicky Fraser. Hello and welcome to the 1000 Authors Show. I'm Vicky Fraser and this week I'm joined by Julia Brown of Brown Owl Design. Hi, Julia. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. It's always really funny when, we, when I do these introductions because like we've already been chatting before. So it's like, hi. Hi, Julia. And it's like, yeah, we said that five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely to be here. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> Thank you. We're both feeling quite pleased with ourselves today because uh, we've got our hair and makeup looking nice. And I have just been deciding whether or not to wear a hat because I was having a bad hair day. Um, so that's that, a little, little insight into behind the scenes of um, a podcast. <laughs> anyway, um, we're talking to Julia today because Julia does all of my book covers. She designs all of my book covers and they're so fabulous and I love them so much. Um, and they're just totally different from any other book covers that I see out there, which is part of the reason why I love them. Um, but I just wanted to talk to you today, Julia, about both book covers and generally art, because you're also an artist, I'm going to get to talk about that. Um, and a little bit about you. So tell 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 my listeners who you are. T- how, how did you become an artist? Uh, well, Julia Brown, and that's kind of the old cliche, cliche that I've been drawing and painting since I was a small child. So it's um, kind of one of those I was lucky enough to be able to pursue it at school and um, have to support my parents to go and do it at university and with a fine art degree. And I painted for a few years and then kind of life got in the way, as it does with many artists having to earn a living and I had to get a job and pay for houses and and all that stuff that life throws at you. So, yeah, I kind of always kept my hands in doing more commercial art, I guess, so concept design for a Christmas decorations company for a long time. And uh, that was kind of designing the massive grottos that you see in the places like Westfield in London and... um, centre parks and all sorts of places so uh that was kind of weird doing Christmas in April <laughs> yeah four years running. but um yeah I kind of got that commercial side and did sort of design and illustration and fell in love with that as well because it's a completely different discipline yeah. um and then living from it and then eventually I just got to the point where I don't know I kind of I miss the the fine art side and the painting and uh, I think it was something more recently as well that I've taken a lot more time to, to kind of get back to and, and realise how much I enjoy it. So, um, yeah, I, I had a horrible job for a while. didn't feel like I was going anywhere, so I quit that, decided to start upon my own doing design and illustration. And then that's kind of led a full circle back into the painting again. So. Yeah. That's really cool because most people, I think a lot, I think a lot of people, a sad, a sad number of people hate their jobs, I think. I and mean, most of them, I think, just stick with it. So it's a really brave thing to do, to leave your job. I mean, how did, how did you feel when you did? Was it scary? Yeah, very, very scary. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was quite lucky at the time that I kind of eased into it because I had an old contact that I ended up doing a few months of freelancing for. So when I decided to press the quit button on my, my job, um, I, I kind of I knew I'd got a few months money coming in um, to, to get my ship in order and, and then start obviously building up with the clients and, and going my own direction so that was a nice way of doing it and I was lucky and it was great because I didn't have the you know the tr- traditional thing everybody says oh if you're going to quit your job and start your own business up you must have a six months buffer of salary and it's just like yeah. If, I didn't. if you kind of spent your life building that up, you'd probably never quit your job because it's never possible. Yeah. <laughs> it's not on the that I was on anyway. <laughs> um, I think sometimes so, circumstances force you, don't they? Because I did not, I had nothing. I left, I, I was like, I was like, you can't find me, I quit. And that was it. And it was like, yeah. oh. <laughs> That was kind of pretty much where it was getting to with, with my job. It was a very, kind of quite toxic workplace and, um, yeah, it was never going to go anywhere, really. So uh, it, there's times in your life when you just you just got to draw a line and get on with it and, and kind of stand up for yourself and, and, and carve your own path, think a little bit. And it was very, very scary. And sometimes it, quite frankly, it still is. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also being, being the mistress of your own destiny is absolutely fantastic. And, I, you know, it's lovely being able to work hard but work hard where you want to and take time off when you want to and fit other things in and, and have a much more flexible life um 
So that's a, a fantastic bonus to it. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to kind of be one of these people who say, oh, yeah, I jumped in and made my million in the first year I did the business. I had a huge amount to learn. And I don't think I ever realised how much I needed to learn about uh, business, marketing, everything, um, apart from, you know, my own skill set. Um, and I'm still learning. And I think it's only just after four years... <laughs> Nearly five years, it's just all starting to come together. So, yeah, it's not easy. Um, but if you've got a thirst for learning and, and kind of making yourself better, um, I think that's one of the fundamental things you need to have if you're going to run your own business. Is you, you need to have that kind of passion for improving yourself and improving what you do and, and making sure you can kind of wear quite a few hats to start with, I think, as well, until you get to the point where you can farm it out. Yeah, for sure. It's a it's a scary thing. I've just I just closed my email program so that it wouldn't distract me, and that's where my questions are. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> such a great, such a professional. Um, okay, so that's I, I love your story, and you've worked you've worked so hard as well. I know how hard you've worked because we've been you know working together for quite a long time. Um, which leads me on to how did you get into how did you get into book covers? What made you decide to do book covers? Um, I love books, and I think. Also, I, I kind of did what most graphic designers do and, you know, have a massive umbrella full of different things that you kind of not specialise in, but kind of know how to do. And, you know, good design is good design, but obviously certain aspects of it are completely different. So, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not a UX designer or a web designer particularly, uh, you know, I can design stuff for the web but my passion is always being print and I think that maybe comes from the illustration as well and so when I first started I offered quite a few different design packages and and you know it could pretty much do what people ask but I got to the point where I wanted to specialize and learn more and do the book design thing more intensively because it's it's such a creative, there's a huge creative breadth within the field of book design as it is. And I love the fact that it, it lends its, you know, there's non-fiction, there's fiction, there's the interior illustration, the external illustration, you know, the photography retouching or, or kind of image manipulation that you'll have on the covers. And then also kind of layout and just making a book desirable from uh, a thumbnail on a, computer screen or on your phone or from 20 feet away in a bookshop yeah. or close up as well and it's the books are a thing you know the actual paper and cards and they're a thing and it's beautiful you know mm. it's kind of something you treasure the lifetimes and we were just chatting before I came on screen it's kind of I've got books from my grandparents and you know they get passed down and they're, they're constantly useful but they can also be constantly beautiful as well so yeah they're, they're nice little objects that have a, a use and a, a lasting value so I think making the covers sing and making them beautiful but also work really well as practical covers yeah is a really really nice kind of balance of creativity and the problem solving and solutions that you need to make as a, as a designer yeah. So, yeah cool and so what what makes a good non-fiction book cover because I know people will be wondering that if they're thinking of writing a book. I, well, I think in simple terms, it's got to it's got to attract. It's you know your the front of your book cover and the back is the the advert for your book, literally. Because you know, in, unless you don't see books hanging around with just the writing on, you know, the, the internal text as a, as a cover, because the, there's no way people would be able to decipher it short in the you know the short seconds that it takes to make a decision about what you want to read so yeah it's, it's like um a movie poster when you go to the cinema it, it entices you into wanting to find out more about it and you know adverts on the telly 30 seconds will make you want to look up something even more and, and buy it basically so yeah you, you, a good book cover must sell the book literally so what do you what do you think about when you're designing a book cover what sort of elements do you think about uh, the internal content, obviously, um, the genre of the book really is a good starting point because the, although books need to stand out and look different enough to be attractive and not kind of blend into the crowd, you do you need to kind of fall within parameters of, of your genre? So you, you wouldn't design the cover of a horror novel in the same way that you design a book about 
business and finance, for example, <laughs> although the two might be horrors. But, um, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it, it needs to sit within its own genre and be instantly kind of recognisable in, in that context, but it also needs to stand out. And I think um, things like colours, the, um, obviously the, the client who's writing the book will hopefully have a brief that will go into a bit of detail about who, which audience they're trying to appeal to and what their books, what they want to say in their book and how that needs to come across on the cover. So all those sort of things taken into account. Um, where in the world it's going to be sold as well because, I mean, you know, most books these days are online and sold worldwide, but if it's for a specific target country or audience or, or community, or it needs to appeal to that. And... Uh, go by the boundaries of etiquette, I suppose, as well. You know, there's certain things you could do in one culture that would be acceptable and not in another culture. So you need to be aware of little things like that. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of different... It needs to be legible and, you know, the, the kind of text you use needs to kind of sit well and be easy to read and, and noticeable. So, yeah, quite a few different considerations, really. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because um, if you read, there's a lot of advi- obviously loads of advice out there about how to design book covers and things. And I've seen a lot, and I often give advice as well that says, you know, keep it simple if because yeah. a simple book cover is good. But then if you look at my latest book cover, which I will grab, um, mine is beautiful, um, but it's it's not the kind of it's not the kind of simple look that a lot of books in my genre have and there's a couple of good reasons for that firstly because um because I don't because I want it into one of your beautiful illustrations on the front and second because I kind of wanted it to stand out so um can you tell us a bit about the thought process between like the really simple styles of books so maybe something a bit more like Drayton Bird's book which is like a bestseller or and something like mine okay so I think there's a difference maybe between simple and minimal yeah you know, minimal is very, you know, it can have, say, like maybe uh, two colours. It'll be, you know, white background and black writing or black titles. Um, and I think with yours, it was your character comes So, you know, you're kind of quite bubbly and um, I know you know, some of your dresses. I kind of took inspiration from the illustration and I kind of, there's the way you present your business and the way you encourage people to write. But it's quite, it's not minimal. It's very involved. It's very supportive. And you, you kind of build a relationship with people in order to help them write their books. So I wanted it to be quite personal. And I think you already sort of mentioned that you wanted an avatar for yourself on the cover anyway. So yeah, it makes sense to have this kind of, um, your love of books and your, your kind of various different backgrounds in copywriting and book writing and all that kind of thing sort of shown in, in, in the books. And then um, there's obviously the typewriter, so that's kind of a nod towards the, uh, the writing. And I think there's uh, cookies. Yeah, there, there's also sort of like your, I know you have your favourite mugs and um, <laughs> cookies as well. Yeah, cookies. <laughs> mentioned on various occasions that you have cookies for breakfast <laughs> there is yeah that's one of the book the other books that i want to write this year is cookies for breakfast because we've started working on that cover haven't we <laughs> yeah very simply so yeah there's a few nods towards your My sheeps. background as well your tiny sheets <laughs> somewhere there is um whiskey whiskey the cat up on there the top is, yeah the cat's up there so yeah um, it's and just the flamingo on the side as well which is one of your is. kind yeah. of um my flamingo and there is also eggs <laughs> love that it took me yeah, eggs, I, didn't, eggs chickens. <laughs> I didn't spot those at first I absolutely I love my book cover so much <laughs> so yeah I think um, because your the in, insides of your book come from your heart it kind of makes sense to help the outside of your book so to speak of that as well and I think um, obviously the, 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 the vibrancy of the colour and that's kind of something you notice from quite far away so uh, yeah. yeah there's a lot of books about writing books that are very minimal and very matter of fact and, and straightforward on the covers and I think it stands out quite heavily against those <laughs> I think so too <laughs> Oh, I think so too. Okay, so my question, my next question for you, and I know that a lot of people will be thinking about this, and even if they're not, they should be, which is why I'm going to ask you, because I know this is something that, that makes your life difficult sometimes. What are the elements of a good brief? How? What's the best way to work with a cover designer? What 
absolutely, actually, I'm going to ask you first question. What absolutely drives you nuts about people? And you can totally say me if you want to, because I know, I know that I can be quite, <laughs> quite demanding. <laughs> um, it's not been too bad, actually, because you generally have a, you're, you're happy to kind of leave me to get on with things. And we kind of, now we know each other fairly well, but kind of, I can get on a similar wave like to you anyway. I think, um, it's the chops and changes. Um, but in the initial stages of designing a cover for someone, if, if a client comes to you and says, oh, you can do anything you like, uh, like, well, no, you need some parameters to work by because uh, short of most of the time, and, and I'm one of these designers and most other designers will have a similar kind of working um, practice, is that, that you build a, a package for people and obviously there's a price but that includes only so many revisions it's not this kind of how long is a piece of string of design something revise it design something oh no I don't like that and when when you're given a set of parameters in a brief it gives you a much better fighting chance of getting on the same way by the client in terms of what they like and what will actually be good for them as well and good for their book um so yeah I think having a brief it gives the client themselves a lot more clarity about what we need to think about in terms of what the book will look like and who it will appeal to. But it will also give the designer a chance to get on the same wavelength as the client in terms of what they like and give them a fighting chance of designing something strong for them that they know will work for the book and that they'll also like. Um, and I think also clients must realise that what they necessarily personally like is not necessarily what will work well well for their book cover and yeah. what will attract their, their, their readers. Um, now, I'll qualify that because sometimes, you know, you find the person who would be reading the book, you know, they work that same attraction of audience. But um, there's a lot of occasions where I've had it where um, someone will, We'll kind of say, oh, I don't really like that cover, and and, and this and this and this, and it's like, well, but, but it's actually not going to be targeted towards you, it's going to be targeted towards your readers, so you need to think about what, what will attract them and what will speak to them and why. So um, I think that's a big thing that um, people need to think about when they're designing their, their covers. Don't, don't take it personally and don't design personally for you. Yeah. you know? um, I, th- so, I, think, yeah, I think you've got to... Yeah, because because with that, because you're totally right, you've got it. You've got to have a cover that speaks to your audience. Um, and I also think that you've, as long as you don't hate it, because I think if you hate it, then it's a problem and you, you yeah. need to change it. But as long as you don't hate it, if it's something that's going to work well um, for your target audience, then yeah, definitely, it's 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 important to remember that it's not aimed at you. And um, and anyway, yeah. there are tests you can do. It's like you get on Facebook and run some, you know, run some split tests and see which ones test well. Same way you would with headlines. Yeah, it, it's kind of an easy enough thing to do, sort of make you know. There'll generally be in the first round of designs two or three minimum covers that are kind of variants on the same idea, or you know, using different pictures maybe, or different texts and, and kind of layouts to get an idea. And yeah, testing it out on, on either your email list or on Facebook or something like that is a, is a great idea and you can kind of get a response back from the people you're aiming mm-hmm. at and see which one kind of works or gets the most picks or, or whatever but um, yeah I think it's it, it's a sort of um, balance between being given kind of strong parameters around um, the the author's kind of target or audience and then also their personality maybe or um, kind of making the book theirs and not just too generic and, and kind of faceless. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really hard to put into work sometimes. It's a bit of a balancing act, but I think uh, to, in order to do a good brief, the, the main points are the practical side of it. So you need to have a basic idea of whether you are publishing at a certain size, and you know, there's sort of quite a few different book formats and sizes. So different colors uh, different covers can be different shapes um and it sounds weird but you know and certain rectangle can be short and fat and a 
certain other rectangle can be tall and thin and sometimes when you design a layout for a book club but they don't always work well together or you know we chop and change them yeah so I think yeah your book format and size um an idea of what you want content wise as well you know your titles uh, subtitle if you've got any blurb on the back cover that you want or um, photographs or specific images and colors that's useful to can help you know, design and get an idea. Yeah. Um, kind of times and dates as well. It's worth, you know, sometimes people come to me and say, oh, can you, can you design me a cover? I need it for like two weeks. And <laughs> sometimes it's possible, but there's quite often occasions where I'm in the middle of another project or you just haven't got that level of the development time and research and everything else I've got to do in order to create a really good book cover is, is not going to get it done in two weeks. So yeah. uh, I have to turn people down. So it's well worth thinking far ahead when you when you're kind of at your probably your first edit really. Um, Definitely, yeah. You've got a good idea of, of what your book's going to be about. So yeah, it's yeah. worth approaching a, a designer around that time just to make sure they can fit you in and, and that they can do the job to the best of your ability really as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of in the current process of writing blogs and guides about creating briefs for designers and, and what to think about. So yeah, I was going to ask because I know you've been creating a useful document for people to help them brief designers and things. So where can where can people go to find that? Uh, it's at brownelmdesign.com and it will appear on the front page of the website so you'll be able to have a look at that awesome <laughs> easy to find yeah so when when this podcast goes out I'm, it'll, it'll all be up I should think because yes. we're recording this in advance so yeah go to brownelmdesign.com um, and is that the best place for people to start if they want to get a book cover designed with you yeah definitely I've got a contact page on there so um have a look through there's various um blog posts that I've done that are quite informative about you know have I think about different yeah. things and there's a guide to uh an illustration brief as well so aside from the book design I do the illustrations as well if anyone wants that kind of thing in tandem with book illustrations thanks for listening you can find links and show notes on the website at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast, where you can also sign up for the best daily emails in the multiverse and find loads of free resources to help you write your book. We'll be back the same time next week with more tales from the book writing trenches and the latest on what the tiny sheeps have been up to. Mm-hmm.